Hello, welcome. My name is Lauren with laurenteachesflute.com and today we're going to be talking about part two to my last video that I published, which was how to play a piece, learn a piece quickly on the flute. And so that's definitely the foundational stuff. So if you haven't seen that video, I definitely recommend checking that out. I'll leave a link to that in the description below and somewhere up here. And just to recap that video, we talked about the four tips, which was, let's say you have a page of music that you wanna learn. We were talking about Jolivet, Chanterlino, and I was looking at this page. The first thing is to divide that page into sections with little penciled in brackets. So I don't know if you can see the brackets that I made, but I made about 13 different sections for this one page. Maybe you can see them, they're very lightly penciled in there. So that's the first thing. <laughs> so maybe you divide the piece into sections that are about a line of music long each. This is about two to four measures per bracketed section. And then the next tip was to do a rough playthrough and depending on how many sections you need to learn every day and how quickly you need to learn the piece, I would decide the most difficult sections. So if I needed to learn the whole page in a week, just getting through all the sections in a week, maybe I would then do like three sections a day. So I would choose the three most difficult sections that I found to be the most challenging for that day. And then the tip number three was start slow, but don't stay slow because that's where a lot of people get tripped up. They, they learn like a big chunk of music and they don't divide it into sections and they kind of play through it and they fumble on the different parts of it and maybe they're always fumbling on a different part and there just always seems to be mistakes. But this method would be just really focusing in on one little section at a time, staying focused and getting it really clean and polished uh, on one section at a time. So let's say that, you know, I chose this one section, the first line as my first section, and that was the hardest part of the page for me. So then I would make a goal of playing it slowly about five times in a row. And once I'm able to play it slowly about five times in a row, then I would move on to the, what I called, the fermata technique, which is tip number four. Fermata technique can also be referred to as changing the rhythm. It's a variation of that. So you could, first you could change the rhythm to trick your fingers into playing it faster. So instead of just playing straight 16th notes, you would just play long, short, long, short, long, short, etc. Or you could go short, long, short, long, short, long, short, long. And then the fermata technique is where you hold a note, you play a few notes more quickly, and then you hold another note. So to go more into depth about what the fermata technique is, uh, just check out the video I made, my last video that I made, okay? So after you're starting to get the hang of it and your fingers are getting a little bit of a reflex going, some muscle memory going, by kind of tricking your fingers to playing it fast in small bits that you can handle, then here are some additional tips that I would use in learning a piece efficiently and quickly. And the first tip is the one, two, three notes per beat method. <laughs> and so that's what I'm calling it. So let's say that you have, this piece is David Zubay's Footprints and it has a lot of parts of this music that look like this. Like just a lot of notes crammed into one beat. Or, you know, maybe for the example today, I'm gonna use slightly smaller one so I can do six notes per beat. So yeah, if it just feels like it's a lot of notes in one beat. And for some of you that may just be like, the 16th notes, um, playing four notes in one beat. You can use this, this method for 16th notes as well. 
but this works great for like nine tuplets and ten tuplets, etc., where you're playing many, many notes in one beat. So let me just do an example. Right, so I'm going to just do this example of the six notes in one beat, starting with one note per beat. Normally, if I was working on this, I would just play the whole figure here. I would play like that whole thing. It's like kind of three beats, three big beats, but just because I'm showing you quickly, I'm just going to do this little part. Now two notes per beat. Now three. Now four. Now five. Opportunity, opportunity. <laughs> okay. And then six. That was still five. <laughs> and that's actually quite fast. So then that's six notes per beat. So that's a quick example of what that would sound like. And then you could go back and actually, when I was work, I remember when I was working on this page, I remember when I was working on this page, I would do that method for this whole flourish right here. I would do it every day until I played it up to tempo. And then after I did that, I would go back and play it really, really slowly and iron everything out at a very slow tempo. I'm really just spelling it out for my fingers and showing my fingers this is what you need to do. And I would always go back and play it very slowly. So I love that for really quick flourishes with many notes in one beat. The one, two, three notes per beat uh, method, <laughs> okay? And then tip number six is to separate the notes and the rhythms. So if it's overwhelming, if there's a section that's just kind of overwhelming and there's a lot of quirky rhythms in there and the notes are kind of hard to get all at once too, then, then you can use this technique of separating the notes and the rhythms. So just give yourself permission to put the rhythm on the shelf for a minute and just focus on learning the notes. Turn the metronome off and just learn the notes. Learn them really, really well. And when you're ready, then you can, if you want, you can just work on the rhythm, uh, doing it on one note and just tonguing, tonguing all the notes. And you could just work on the rhythm. You can also speak the rhythm out loud and count, you know, one and two and whatever the rhythm is for what you're working on. You can count it and speak it out loud with the metronome. Play it on one note, tonguing every note. And then you can start combining it. So that's really helpful too, separating them out and then combining it. You can also do this with dynamics. If it's like really overwhelming, you know, when you're working on the section, Put dynamics on the shelf <laughs> for a little bit and just work on the notes and rhythms first and then you can add in the dynamics as you're feeling more and more comfortable with that section that you're working on, okay? So tip number seven, I kind of mentioned it earlier but it's always going back to playing it slowly. Always, always going back to, to the slow tempo, especially if it's a very fast flourishy, quick piece of music, like this one that I'm using as an example today uh, with all those different runs and flourishes in the Zubay's Footprints piece. So always, it's, you know, if you're always playing it fast, your fingers can get, start getting mixed up and confused. So just always remember, it's a good idea <laughs> to go back and revisit it and play it slow often. The next tip is tip number eight, to use timers. Uh, so you can use a timer on your phone. It just adds a little bit more structure to what you're doing. Like if I'm working on the fermata technique where I'm holding a note, playing a few notes fast, and then holding another note, I can do that for 10 minutes. And then when the timer's up, I can assess. Because we can get really lost in what we're doing in, in our practice. We can just kind of get lost in it and continue with it and 
work on it for a really long time, but it's really nice to just be able to kind of section it out. Maybe set the timer for five minutes uh, to do like changing the rhythm or just set the timer for five minutes just to, to work on the rhythm, set the timer for five minutes to work on the notes. It just kind of makes it a little bit more structured and keeps you focused so that you can like, when the timer goes off, you can be like, okay, uh, what do I need to do next? <laughs> As opposed to just getting lost in it or working on other sections or getting distracted. It kind of really can help you stay focused on what you're doing and what you want to do next and staying on track, okay? So set a timer, use timers, and tip number nine is once you're doing all this stuff and you feel like you've learned, like you've learned all the sections on the page that you needed to learn, then I would start to add sections together so that you can start playing through two sections together and see if you can play them both through cleanly, consistently, nice and polished. And then of course you can add three notes, three sections at a time. Then see if you can play four sections together. So start adding the sections together. And tip number 10 is repeat, repeat, repeat. <laughs> so this isn't something you just do once and then take a few days off and then do it again. This is, if you're learning a piece efficiently and quickly, it's every day and review what you did the day before, revisit, you know, show your fingers what they were doing the day before and see if they can still remember some of what they learned the day before and do it consistently. So definitely if you're learning, learning something quick, in a time crunch or you need to learn it as efficiently as possible, do it every single day. And it doesn't, yeah, so that's self-explanatory. <laughs> like if you take a week off, uh, you're gonna forget or you're not gonna retain the muscle memory that you were developing during your practice. So those are the tips <laughs> for how to learn a piece quickly and efficiently. So I hope this was very helpful and informative to you. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos and tutorials like this one. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here and I'll see you in another video very soon. Until next time, take care. Bye.